Hi, David again for ConcertBlogger.com. Uh, we're here today with Nathan West. You're going to be doing uh, a show tonight here in New York. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Um, so, first question. You have such a thriving movie career and a young family. Why music? Why now? Music's always been the heart of everything I've done. Um, even with all of my acting and stuff and, and my characters that I create, uh, they all have songs. I've written for every single one of them. Um, music's been something that I've been dear in my heart since I was 16. So uh, it was something that just naturally, the progression in my artistry, I was like, yeah, I, it was time to step out and start sharing that music. That, and I think my wife was going to kick my ass if I didn't. <laughs> so about 10 years now, she's like, we used to just do your music. So um, it was just time. It's time. Awesome. Um, what part did music play in your youth? Um, was, there, was there a lot of music in your home life? Uh, well, my mom, um, she was kind of, you know, she shared, shared a lot of her music with me. That's where, like, the Bob Dylan, the Van Morrison, and a bit of the Otis Redding, you know, comes from, things like that. Um, and for me, um, music's always been a big part because uh, I played hockey growing up, and I played goalie, so it's like the crazy position, you know? Because <laughs> everybody else can make a mistake, but if you made a mistake, you went up on the board. Exactly, and, exactly. And so, you know, I would spend an hour before every game, and I'd have playlists and things, you know, um, even back in the day when it was just tapes, you know, make, make, mix make a mixtape and of course, put it on of course. and just sit back and sit in my own gold gear and, you know, my eyes closed and I just listen to music and I just, you know. Whatever. Get in that place, get, your, get yourself centered a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so it's always been a big part. Well, what were some of the first bands that you were into? Who, who, who you went to? Who were on your mixtapes? What, oh, what kind of music was so Which ones will I tell you were on the mixtapes? <laughs> uh, you know, um, yeah, uh, well, I mean, Definitely, obviously, all the grunge that came out. I mean, Nirvana was huge for me. Uh, Pearl Jam, of course, Soundgarden, um, kind of in that whole. I mean, then when Weezer came out, I mean, that was where I just fell in love. And I remember when Red Hot Chili Peppers came out with um, Under the Bridge. That was the first time I bought a guitar. I was like, I've got to learn how to play the song. And it was funny because that was the only song I learned to play. And then I put the thing down for like a year. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah that's that's cool. that guy, I know. So that's I was awesome. I play this, is, you know. And, that was it. Yeah. I know how to play that song. Yeah, that was it. It made me cool, I guess. <laughs> so you're here with this, uh, with the EP release party tonight. Yes. Um, it's the soundtrack to your upcoming movie project. Yes. Uh, titled Into the Mystic. Tell me how the songs inspired the movie. Well, you know, I really wanted to go through this creative process where we took um, the songs and just, I just had these ideas of songs I wanted to write and, you know, um, songs that weren't finished for over 10 years that were just sitting there. And I, I thought, I want to create a movie from these songs. I just want to record them and sit back and listen to them and allow them to kind of dictate, kind of, you know, start to meld the story together and create something. And it worked. I mean, and, you know, it's not like everything verbatim is in there, you know, but the essence, you know, like you listen to like a, a soundtrack or a certain song and it just puts you in a certain place, a certain mood, or a certain emotion, you know? It just mm -hmm. changes your whole landscape. You think about it, you put some earbuds in, you walk around a city like this, especially in the rain, I mean, you can take yourself into a whole, a whole world, different place, a whole right? different place. And so that's kind of was the essence of, and, and the heart behind what I was doing was, I wanted to create this kind of very cinematic, very emotionally uh, charged music that would allow me to then sit back, you know, put the earbuds in, and just, and, you know, Go by on the balcony or something and, and just think and like start to write ideas and that's how it came about. Great. Can you tell me a, a little bit about the movie? What the, what the movie's about exactly? Yeah. Well, it's about um, not not specifically, but uh, around yeah. about. Yeah, around about. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the theme kind of behind it is is the word love. Um, I think that that has so much to do with obviously our lives, day in and day out. Sometimes when we don't even think about it, um, and it's such a vast world. You know, if you think about love, it's like, I love ice cream, you know, or I love, you know, I love this person, your first love, your second love, your true love. I mean, there's so many different variations. And so I wanted to try to create a story that really kind of was interwoven with the different, um, different sides of love from friendship to um, strangers meeting and, and, you know, passion or, or compassion for people to help out to you know, the deep-seated love to heartbreak and all those things to try to put it together. So, it's not the notebook by any means. I'm not trying to go there, okay? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's not that. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, it's a journey movie, but it's a great movie and, and it explores all the facets of love. Cool. Um, where in the process is the movie? Have you shot it? 
No. Like timetable? Yeah, we're shooting in uh, March 2015, so we okay. still have a little bit of time. Um, we're kind of doing the music as a pre-release. Precursor. Yeah, to and just to try to build a little bit of an audience. You know, we're to crowdfund a little bit. We have the financing in place, um, but, uh, you know, I should say crowdfund as much as crowdsource. We want to, you know, really get people invested in what we're doing. Of course, you know? of course. And of course, it's especially with like a small independent film, you can always use, you can always inflate the budget. Oh well, you know, yeah, there's not a problem more. with that. Not a problem with that. There's but not we, quite have, we have the baseline, um, you know, budget what we need to really shoot it and make a great film. Um, but we're gonna try to expand on that. A little bit of help always always adds a few extra scenes yeah, exactly. in. Exactly. <laughs> or we'll what have it. you. Take absolutely, it. absolutely. Um, being married um, to your actress wife, yes. Kyla, Kyla Lee, uh, it must be difficult to align your schedules. Did that play a part in the decision to kind of do this project together a little bit? Yeah, you know, we've worked together five times. Um, sometimes they're short, you know, but um, I mean, we met acting, and um, you know, this business is an interesting one. It, it, it kind of breeds itself in wanting to, you know, build you up and kind of pull you apart. And when you, especially when you have family and all those other, you know, elements, it's like, you really have to be um, cautious as to how you move forward, you know. And so when we sat our, our, our kids, um, our first was born, Noah, you know, um, she was doing TV. I mean, she works nine months out of the year. So I started to take somewhat of a back seat to allow her more time to do that so that Noah always had somebody with him. Of course. And, you know, that's a sacrifice for me. Not a lot of people make that sacrifice. I'm not saying it's the right move, you know. Obviously, creatively, it probably, um, you know, it might not seem like the best thing for a career, but you know we've been able to sustain, and it's been great for us. It's more than a career; it's a life. This is well, your life, and that's it. We really create a lifestyle in what we do, you know. And um, you don't always make the right decisions, but you try to make the best ones, and and that's what we've done, and it's worked for us. And now is the time. And, and her and I love working together. We have a passion to not only work together, not just because we're together, but because I believe she inspires me. She's a fantastic actress. So, and likewise, you know, she feels like the music and the acting, like, we just play, we ebb and flow off each other so much more than people even know. Cool. You know? Um, so you've played a few West Coast shows, uh, and there are a few here in New York. Any plans to play any other shows? Yeah, I mean, we're going to keep playing kind of the, the LA, New York thing right now. Um, it's just best for the scheduling, and we have other stuff in production, and we're also going to um, release an LP in late August, so we're back in the recording studio to do some more songs. Um, so that's kind of the best thing is to, we have the world in LA and the one here in New York, um, but eventually we're going to go out and start to tour all around oh, cool. the awesome. States. Yeah. Have these LA and New York shows been the first time that you've played out? As, as this project, as a, as yes. A, as a, as a, as yeah, a you know, and, and honestly, I've, I've played out before um, and, and done some smaller stuff, but with a full band and like this, I've not done this before, not to this extent. Oh, I love cool. it. Cool. How did the band come together? Um, through one of the uh, producers and a dear friend of mine, Johan Frank. Um, he helped produce the album. He's also my music director. And, uh, New York City. There it is. <laughs> yeah, City. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he um, kind of helped pull together all these Berkeley cats. They're all... Cool, cool, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you what. These are guys that know so how to play. I have. Oh, you're telling me, man. I mean, these guys are just incredible. Great personalities, too. So it's a lot of fun. Um, you look very different than you did in Bring It On and yeah. Miracle, the long hair and the beard and everything. Do you find that people tend to pigeonhole you into who you were when they first discovered you? You know, not so much. I think I've done a really good job of kind of, um, you know, stepping a little bit back and hiding out a little, um, allowing these changes to kind of take place and stuff and being very uh, picky about the projects I did afterwards. You can kind of see I did a lot more independent stuff. Yeah. I had a lot of opportunity to do a lot more commercial stuff and I just was like, no, I don't want to go down that road. I've always been hesitant about just stepping out there and doing things. And sometimes I kick myself to work because I'm like, dang it, I should have done that movie. Yeah. You know, I was offered that movie and I should have done it. And then, Hindsight I, is 2020. Yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, as this is your EP release show, I should mention that it's available right now, starting today, yeah. on iTunes, yeah. or you can stream it from your YouTube page. Yes, uh, I, I've been doing. I did that all afternoon. Right on. Um, but of course, buying it is much better. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> much better this idea. Week, anytime this week. So you are a big fan of the NHL. Yes. Uh, what's your, what's your team? Oh man, you know what? Um, are you just a fan of the sport? No, no. I mean. I've always been a huge Edmonton Oilers fan, and you know if someone says they're an Edmonton Oilers fan, 
they're a real fan of them. Now, nowadays, exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> they are not doing so no, well this year. No, this year and plenty of other years. Sorry, years. guys. Uh, but no, but you know what? I, what I love about that team, no matter what, um, yes, the competition is all about winning, but at the same time, I, that team has always had this heart of being, they just, they play hard, they're, they're tough, um, they play with passion, you know, and I just, I mean, I just love watching them. They're great to watch. Who do you, you think is going to win the cup this year? Who's your pick? Oh. I, I have to say, I grew up in, uh, in southeastern Massachusetts. I'll just say, well, I'm, 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 I grew I, up a Bruins fan, but now in New York here, it's I don't know. a little bit difficult I'll to tell, still I'll keep tell, that allegiance. I'll tell, what, I'll tell you what. They've got a good team, I think. I mean, only, I'm saying this to my older brother, I, I will have to say the Bruins like to see it happen again. Um, they're a great team, and he his favorite team, so. I can't say Edmonton. This is, <laughs> not, it's so not going to be Edmonton this year. I'll, I'll go back Maybe next year or the year after. You get a good couple of good drafts. Now they can't give me any crap. I'm like, yeah, Bruins, Bruins. So yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, it was a lot of years being a Bruins fan that no one could say that they oh, were yeah, win anything. Very true. Yeah, they, they were beating job, people though. up, but they weren't winning anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Last question I have for all my interviewees: uh, What is something about yourself or your life that fans might be surprised to know? Something that they wouldn't, you know, necessarily be on your Wikipedia page or what have you, do you have a, a pet or a hobby specifically? Um, well, we did get a new, new uh, a little puppy, but um, you know, uh, philanthropy is huge for me. Um, and we don't really shine a light on it that much. Um, my wife and I just started a, a, a company, a production company, who's doing the film we're doing, um, called Modern Machine. And um, we're really out, our goal is to, and the vision is to be, um, kind of the, you know, the pinnacle of philanthropic uh, independent filmmaking, you know, so um, where we're not just taking small bits of, you know, the back end and giving it to, you know, charities, but literally the communities we go into when we work there in Morocco is very specific, there's a purpose and reason behind going to Morocco, but one of the things is to go out there and actually affect the community while we're there. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, we've been involved with a lot of charities for a long time. Um, it's a big part of our lives, and I think it should be a part of everybody's lives. Even no matter what you have, give no back a little bit. You have to, especially if you live here in the United States. I think that it's it's really important. Not that everybody has something, you know, but um, what you do have, you should share. You should, and, and you'll get back everything you ever need. That's my wife and I specifically have that little yeah. thing that we go by, and that's how we live our life. And it would be it's it's amazing how much comes back to us by just you know not giving away everything that we have, but giving yeah. away what we have to share. Yeah, and and I think live life with gratitude. You know, exactly. and that's the exactly. way to do it is, is to give back, give some time, you know, um, help somebody out that needs help. Hold the door for a second. I mean, chivalry yeah. is not dead, but exactly. man, it, it sure is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's dwindling. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> In the modern world, everyone's too worried about themselves and yeah. so on and so forth. So, well, thank you so much for your thank time. You. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. And yeah. uh, we'll see you tonight. We'll check out the show tonight and everything. Awesome. Go Mets. Go Mets. <laughs>